This video is sponsored by Draco Studios. So guys, this video is a bit different and the reason we're doing this video this way is me and Josh are trying a completely new skill. It's something we've not played with at all, is it? Mm -hmm. We're going to have a play with oils and we're going to be using them to paint with, not just as washers like you've been doing for quite a while now, haven't you? Yeah, for the last couple of months I've been using some cheap ones for washers and stuff, but... Mm -hmm nothing like this before yeah i've only been using like streak and grime and just black washes over terrain and stuff and i do like the effects i'm getting so i want to deeper dive into it and the reason we've been talking about using oil paints a bit more is because we bumped into a guy at the uh, war on the weekend uh, called joshua mallet now he paints with oils exclusively and his work is ridiculous we'll put links to all his instagram uh, below and he also has a guide on his website for free uh, so if you're thinking about playing with oils, go check that out. And uh, we asked for a couple of tips. So here's what he had to say. Hey Luke, how's it going? Just wanted to give you a quick call. I'm so excited for the fact that you're using oil paints and I want to give you some tips to get you started just to help you along your way. The biggest rule that you have to remember when using oil paints is firstly, do not buy cheap oil paints. So obviously, I didn't listen. I did buy some cheap oils because I'm a tight ass. Um, but I did buy some Winsor & Newtons as well. He did say at a minimum buy Winsor & Newton, which that must mean that they're okay, but they are the cheap ones. Yeah. But we got a 20 quid, 10 bottle set for Winsor & Newton, which were pretty reasonable. I wanted to give you another tip for using oil paints, and that is to use liquid original fast drying medium. That will increase the drying time for your paints by 50% meaning that you won't have to wait ages for oils to dry and instead of just drying over a couple of days or dry overnight or even faster if you're using thin layers. So use that, very helpful, especially if you're used to working with acrylics, just gives you more time to blend, but dries really, really quickly. So yeah, hope that helps. So I didn't listen to him about the medium. Um, I've got white sprit, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> it does the same job. Josh, we're so sorry, <laughs> or I am at least. <laughs> Don't blend with thinner. You want to make sure that you're using a dry brush as well and that you've got no um, thinner or water if you're using water mixable paints um, to blend your colors together. Make sure that your dry brush is completely dry and then wipe off the paint, wipe off? Wipe off the paint um, when you're like blending the two colors together. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me know if this is helpful. And the dry brush tip that will come in handy because mm -hmm. i i'd have just mixed in paint and medium on it and rubbed that, all paint off yeah that's a good good bit of advice i would have thought again to yeah. go in with clean to try and mix them together but i guess it would just rub them off yeah yeah and uh no it, it, it was a very useful tip <laughs> so because we're going to be trying something new we needed some models to test them out on and the models that we're using in today's video are from draco studios these are from their dragon bond range which is their own world own universe that they have it's got full RPG stuff. It's good for tabletop gaming. And the models themselves are absolutely fantastic. They were supported amazingly. Yep. Came off really nice and clean. They've got so much detail on them. These are some of the nicest models that I've I've done through 3D printing. I know you've been 3D printing for a bit longer than me, but th this, I mean, this one, I love this one. Yeah, it's amazing. The, re the reason for this as well is they've got sculptors that used to work for Games Workshop and some other leading like mm -hmm. sculptors one thing i will say if you are checking them out on their uh, tribes or their my mini factory looking at some of the renders they look good but they don't look that impressive and i was when i first looked at the renders i was like oh they're all right we'll see what they're like but when they print off they are amazing the, the complete carbon opposite to the renders normally it's the other way around the yeah, render yeah. looks amazing the prints are right the, the renders are right. The prints are actually amazing. I was very shocked. Uh, and these models are absolutely gorgeous. Now, another thing that they're, they're working on, which I'm quite excited about, is working on a full game system. And Alessio is going to be writing that game system for oh, them. Right. So that's something to really look forward to. It's, it's a brand new company. They've got the first month out, which is um, orcs riding dinosaurs. Insane. Amazing. Um, and... Because they're putting a game system out and everything else, it's a company to keep your eye on, especially if they're putting sculpts out like this. They are phenomenal. So make sure to check the links down below in the description for their My Mini Factory, for their tribes, and go and check them out because these really are absolutely fantastic models. 
So thanks for the Spark Draco Studios. You've got some amazing models. Now back to the video. Now, the first models that were printed off, because we didn't want to paint the Beastie Boys off at the start, we wanted to play with something that were just small and get an idea of how oils work when you want to paint with them rather than use them as washers. Mm -hmm. It is very different. I keep touching your hand. It's all right. <laughs> um, what I found instantly we're using the cheap oils is they took some covering. And if you watered it down to a point where you thought, oh, that's painting well, it was just so transparent. Yeah, I noticed that as well, because like you put yours on a little bit thicker to get the coverage, yeah. but it's ended up being like really, really glossy yeah. and covering up a lot of the detail. Yeah. Whereas I thinned mine down quite a lot to try and get it to go on a bit better, but mm -hmm. then the coverage is just not there. No. Um, the blue wasn't too bad, but it's just really desaturated. Yeah, very muted in colour. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not ideal. No. And it put a bit of a dampener on yeah, the project. Yeah. And we were excited about it and I tried it and went, this is horrendous. I am not going <laughs> to enjoy this at all. Why have I set myself to do this? Um, but we thought we'd crack out the Windsor and Newtons. Mm -hmm. And I got the teal and I thinned it down to a lot thinner than the, um, the cheap ones. Yeah. And I started painting it on the dragon. Game changer. Yeah. As what? soon as I put it, I'd literally, I'd literally put like I'd, I'd painted an arm on yeah. the dragon and i went i'm not using contrast or speed paints ever again yeah watching you put, put that on i was really really excited it looked absolutely amazing going on and yeah. complete night and day difference to the to the cheaper ones yeah. that we did on the other models the color the coverage and just how well they dry yeah I, just yeah it's super nice and vibrant like you said they, they did considering that they're for oil paints and stuff mm -hmm. which have a longer working time they did dry pretty quickly yeah um anyone that doesn't know oil paints dry by the spirit the, that you're mixing them with evaporating leaving all the pigment on the model which is why you can reactivate them and stuff yep. later on if you want to uh but yeah these these worked absolutely fantastic and watching you paint this dragon up yeah i was yeah super excited to have a go with them myself and one once i'd done the the body all i went in and did then was i put some i mixed a pink up um for the wings for the fleshy bits and I put that on as more of a more of an opaque sort of layer, and mm -hmm. it, I, I couldn't I couldn't get over how thin it was. But the best thing about it as well, it didn't run like a speed paint or a contrast. Just went paint, on and then sat. Just went on and sat there. Yeah. It was really easy to control, which is good for me because my brush control is horrendous. Um, and then, and then what I did was is I slapped a gloss varnish over it, and then lobbed some magenta on as a, as like a, a thick wash, mm -hmm. and then dropped it off. Yeah, just went in with some more thinner. Yeah, and wiped it off. And that's more or less all I've done. And I got it painted in what, three hours? Yeah, really like, yeah about three, three, maybe four hours. Um, for mine, I decided to go with more of the traditional approach that I've been using my oils for. Uh, so I went in with the airbrush, just painted it with acrylics to start with, and then went in and added the oil washers but rather than just like as a recess wash, I did it more as a sort of tint. So the magenta that I put on the skin, um, which I then removed from the higher up areas to reveal the sort of pink color underneath. To, so it's like highlighting, but by taking stuff off rather than painting in reverse. Up. Yeah, so I painted the highlight, then put the base turn on and then took it off of the highlights. Yeah. It was really weird. Um, and I really enjoyed the wings as well, putting the green wash. I put a blue through to yellow, and then put a green wash on this. And then what that's done is tinted the colors underneath. Give it a filter. Giving it a filter. And then, so what we've got now is sort of like a dark green all the way through to a light green, yep. which I'm pretty happy with. It that. looks amazing. What I really liked about watching Josh do it is I find painting highlights quite awkward. Uh, and sometimes I don't know where to do it or how aggressive to do it. Whereas watching him just take it off like the top of the chest, some of the muscles like on the fingers and the transition's very smooth because you load up that uh, Q-tip or a brush with some oils and you stick it on and it just, the amount of oil just sort of pushes it and naturally blends it. Yeah. It's set like such a quick, easy way to get like a very good paint job just by taking it off with a Q-tip. Yeah, it is, it is a weird, weird way of painting, but yeah, the results are fun. I mean, the, the bit for me is like you say, on the chest and stuff, but on the tail, especially, mm -hmm. um, because what I did is took it off of the top of the tail. Yeah. 
so that it's got the pale pink underneath and it fades out into that sort of darker magenta that's on the underneath. And it's the cooled oil. a little bit underneath as the oils run and yeah. it's made it, like it's almost washed it again, but removed the highlight. But like no work at all, really. Like really, really easy to do. Um, I had a hell of a lot of fun. I don't know whether I'll swap to painting with them fully like you've done. I like, know you're like fully sold out. That's solid. As, as in speed painting contrast for me, these do that job, mm -hmm. but better. Right. See, I don't know if I'll swap just because it's a little bit of extra work. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to clean your brushes differently. You've yep. got, you mean, I don't think I'll do that. But what I am going to try and do is experiment a bit more. I'm going to get myself some of them nicer ones and newer yep. ones rather than just the cheap ones that I've got. And I'm going to experiment a bit more and try using them more as sort of filters and stuff rather than just black and brown washers. But guys, if you are on the fence about messing with oils, I were always set back. I always saw it as a bit of a... It's a bit of a pro thing, is painting with oils. Mm. It's got this sort of... It's got a stigma attached it's, it's to it. It's got a stigma it, yeah. attached to it. And I always put off because I don't see myself as a great painter. I don't understand colour theory. I don't understand um, painting techniques in general. So I always put off. And I'm happy that I spoke to Joshua at the event because I'm really happy that I found this because painting a dragon in a couple of hours and it looks like that, I'm absolutely sold. Totally sold. Yeah. And the fact that you can fix your mistakes really quickly and easily well that's and, it yeah the, the you've got so much time to rework stuff if you put too much on or not enough on it, it's really easy to fix stuff it is a very forgiving medium yeah using oil paint so blending for me is not something that i i really struggle to do it using acrylics whereas with these oils i were able to go from the fleshy part to the top of its head and get a really nice transition in color because they're a lot more forgiving and I actually found painting with oils for doing things like blending a hell of a lot simpler than using acrylics. And that's not something I thought I was going to say. The thing with the thing with oils is because you are literally pushing the pigment around yep. within the, the spirit, the medium. So you've got a hell of a lot more control over where it goes. And then if it doesn't end up in the right place, you just move it again. Yep. Like once it's there, that's not it. It's not stuck like it is with acrylics. So that is nice. That is a nice uh, sort of bonus to using oils. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and if you're on the fence, guys, do try it. 20 quid for that Winsor & Newton set. I'll pop a link below if I can find a link to it. Just get yourself some odorless thinners because sitting in a room using oils all day. <laughs> I, I'm normally just using it for a few washes, so I'm only with it for like 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. But sitting in a room all day with white spirit, it's a bit pongy. Yeah, it does a little bit, yeah. It stinks a bit, <laughs> doesn't it? Um, but other than that, don't be afraid of it. Do not be afraid of it. Add in another tool to your bow. And for me, for doing like organic stuff and speed painting, I never thought I'd say that using oils for speed painting, but the color, the vibrancy of the color and how easy it goes down, I can actually do blending on the fly. I love it. I'm yeah. sold. It, it stopped contrast and speed paints. And I think that's what I'm going to call the video. Yeah, like I said, definitely an eye-opening experience. Um, definitely something that I'd, I'm going to experiment a bit more with, but like I say, I don't think I'm quite as sold at it as you, but still, I did have a hell of a hell of a lot of fun, yeah. and using them more as, as tints and stuff like that. Um, this magenta, I just oh, magenta don't exist. No, it don't know. No, no. Since V told me that magenta didn't exist, and my, my brain exploded, editing it over my head. Yeah. But anyway, guys, I hope you've liked this video. Something a bit different, and we're trying this format for, especially when we we're experimenting, to see if any of you guys have anything, any input. If you're on the fence about doing it, pop in chat below, and we'll have a chat about it. But painting with oils is just amazing. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Definitely something I'd recommend people trying so they can work it out for themselves. Yeah. It's not as scary not as you think it's going to be. Not at all. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to support the channel, use the links to Draco Studios below. Draco Studios are the models that we've been using in this video, and they've got some awesome stuff coming out. Thanks for supporting the channel. Can't do it without you. And if you want to support the channel any other ways, check out Geek Gaming Scenics for all your basing needs. Well, other than that, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below, and I'll see you again for the next video. Love, love, love.